If we look at our player spreadsheet, we can sort by any column that we think is the most important statistic. However, what if we think that there's actually two stats or three stats that together form the ultimate combination of statistics? Uh, often, if you have too many things, you are not really doing your analysis right. It means that you're just assuming that everything has equal importance, which it does not. However, there still might be two or three things that stand out as very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on column C here and create a new column and call it our power rank. So we are going to create a formula that will essentially give a power ranking uh, to assess uh, a few sets that we think matter. So let's say based on our analysis that short catches uh, and long catches both matter and they matter equally. So short catches and long catches matter and they matter equally. And it's not the percentage uh, or the number of attempts, just the number of catches. If I were to just add these two numbers together, the short catches and long catches, you can see that there's far fewer long catches than short catches because it happens less in the game. Uh, there's a lot more short passing going on. And so if I were to add them, the long catch numbers would be completely overshadowed by the short catch numbers. So that's not going to be an effective way of combining them. You could arbitrarily say, well, I'm going to take short catches and add it to five times the number of long catches just to try to balance them out. But that's kind of arbitrary, too. That doesn't really make sense. One thing that uh, is very common when you're combining different types of stats together, and I'm going to insert a column here, is to calculate a z-score for uh, a particular stat. So z-score for short catches, z-score SC right here. And if you recall, the z-score is how much above or below average an individual is in a list. So if the average of these uh, number of short catches, let's say it's 700. This person here is 720 above average. But how many standard deviations is that? Let's say the standard deviation is 300. So then it would be one, two and a third standard deviations above average. If you're wondering how I got that, let's go ahead and pull out our calculator. If my value is 1420 and I want to see how far above average it is, and average was 700, I could subtract it and get I'm 720 above average. Then I want to see how many standard deviations is that. So I divide whatever my answer is by the standard deviation. We're just making it up saying it's 300, leaving me with 2.4. So a little more than 2 and a third. So 2.4 would be my z-score. And you could do that for all of these values. And about half of them roughly would be above 0. Half would be negative. Now the nice thing about Excel is that we don't have to do all of that work. All we're going to do is say that the z-score is, and we'll use parentheses on top for our numerator, it's the value minus the average, so av, and you start typing it, and it's average of column h, close that parentheses, and then we'll close the parentheses for the entire top, forward slash to do divide, and then we're going to divide by the standard deviation. So the value minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So standard deviation and we're going to go with population. So standard deviation P. Double click that. And then again I'll click on H, column H. Close my parenthesis and hit enter. And you'll see that it automatically will calculate all of these standard deviations. Now my guess that the average was 700 and the standard deviation was 300 turned out to not be that far off because our predicted just kind of uh, random guess was 2.4 actually it turned out to be 2.5 you scroll down and you'll start to see about half the list is above average half the list is below average but the nice thing is is these are all standardized to this list of numbers so this person is way above average for this particular category we can go over to long catches now and do the same thing. So I'm going to insert a new column and I'm going to call this uh, z-score 
long catches and it is equal to the number of long catches minus the average of long catches and I forgot to put an opening parenthesis here so I want to put parentheses around my top so that that whole subtraction problem is included there divide that by standard deviation of the population of column L close that and it will calculate all of these z-scores for me here as well. Now I want these z-scores to be positive because positive means uh, that they're doing a lot of it. So if I sorted by long catches from largest to smallest you would see I get a very positive z-score. So it turns out this player here seems to be way above average for number of long catches. So for whatever reason maybe uh, it looks like although she's a little bit slow and a little bit short maybe she's guarded by people who are even slower and shorter so maybe she just runs deep a lot and gets open so let's go ahead and take our long catch z-score and our short catch z-score and because they are both standardized values they are both uh, z-scores unitless numbers we can just add them together so column I and column M so our power rank is going to be this z-score plus so I just clicked on it and then plus this z-score and when I hit enter it will automatically fill that entire column so I can now sort largest to smallest and now I have a power ranking that combines both stats together so I have Layla, Maya, Jane, Eli in that order if I wanted to add a third thing let's say it turned out that defensive short catches against was really important uh, so you wanted to minimize this number so you really wanted it to go from smallest to largest we could insert this in uh, give it a title so that we know what it's talking about we open our parenthesis subtract our average of the column and divide it by the standard deviation of the column get those values and what we want to do with that is we want this to be negative so negative is good that means if negative is good when we add it into our super formula when we add it to our power rank we would actually not want to say plus but we would want to say minus we would want to do the opposite because we want that power rank to go up and if negative is good here then we want to subtract it so negative defensive score and now we can resort our power rank from largest to smallest and when you include all three of those stats together as z-scores this is how they add up you'll still notice that there are problems with this right um, Layla in this case is so much above the average has such a high z-score for those long catches that she overshadows everyone else in other categories just from that one area alone so that's one of the one of the susceptibilities of this method but uh, one of the only ways around that would be to rank everybody so it's not how far above average it's just give me rank order one two three four all the way to 98 um, and then add up their rankings uh, to to see who has the lowest rankings type of thing so that's that's another approach you can take z-scores is probably going to be a little bit more effective though uh, so I wish you luck in combining the multiple regression results uh, to pick out which categories matter uh, and then finding some z-scores so that you can add them together, get a single ranking, uh, sort them, and have one quick system to assess all of your players. Good luck.